Hello, hello, hello. For those of you who have a beer or any other similar beverage, pour one out for the lost Teractor run this PC has claimed will be with you at heart was and was soul. What are we gonna do here though? We're gonna we're we're having a lot of fun with terraforming Mars right now. In fact, you might have noticed the fact that this is a third season of playing terraforming Mars, so obviously we are okay with it. <laughs> but it, it does still hurt and burn to lose a run. So let's talk about what's interesting for this run. To rack, or, or maybe I'll start with uh, Credit Core. Credit Core is powerful if you pay cards that are of $20 or more cost. We have one here and one here, both powerful cards, both of which give you a little bit of plant income. This one can be much stronger if you already have plants, but, you know, not really a thing. Could Tractor play, or Credit Core play both of those? Mm, I don't think so, because you grab both cards, right? Look at it this way. It, it costs basically $57, all the money you have, to buy both the cards. Except you have to pay 6 up front for them. After you play the first card, which you'll be able to do, you'll get 4 back and not have enough for both of them. So sad days. Alright? And then I look over here and, you know, this is all kind of mad, non-synergistic. The only thing really good about Credit Core is probably grabbing one of these giving up on the microbes that this card would give you, and, you know, taking the heat and the plant income, yada yada. That's fine. But Tharsis, on the other hand, a couple things come to mind. Energy is one of the biggest issues for Tharsis. You can see here, Urbanized Area, great card for us. However, you know, we don't have the energy necessarily to play it. It also needs to go between cities and... The AI has done a great job screwing us over, quite frankly, and uh, and and blocking this north-south passage around the board. But for most factions, that'd be hard. With Tharsis, we plan on playing on the board anyway. Another thing about this is mining area, very powerful card, but you need board presence to play it. It has a little asterisk here. You can only play it beside where you already have. So that's you know that's okay. Martian rails. This card gives you more money the more energy you have. So like, or sorry, more money the more cities that are on the board. Okay, well as Tharsis, if we play Urbanized Area, there's already four in the first turn. That's pretty powerful. Energy card. Hmm. This is good, but it requires two energy tags. Well, then you flip over here. Oh, an energy tag, which could give us an early energy, for instance, maybe give us Urbanized Area. And a second energy tag, which gives us the option of buying energy in the future as we consume our energy, or instead of spending seven for one, we could spend twice that amount, 14, for two and get all these tags. The biggest issue with all this is that it costs money. <laughs> uh, but I think that all of these cards are so great in their synergies that if we have a little bit slower of a first run, that's going to be fine. Next up, where do we put our first city? I could place it here and then connect with our urbanized area or here and connect, but a couple of plants isn't that much. We could take this, but then we wouldn't have a spot for our mining area. However, if we go here, A, we're getting points for being beside the greens, and then when we put the urbanized area, we'll get a card and we'll still have a location for the mine. Question. Can we play Urbanized Area and Deep while heating this turn? Yes, and we have a little bit of money left over, which is important. <laughs> so now I'm going to buy Mining Area first, because Mining Area we can spend the steel on. But when we place this, we'll get steel back. If we played the city, we would only get the card, and then when we built the Mining Area, we'd get that steel after the fact and have nothing to spend it on. Grabbing the steel first means we can use it this turn. That's a heat bump. Yay. Next thing that makes Tharsis strong, bam, urbanized area. So normally, you'd only get two income for this, but we're going to get three income because we're Tharsis, and we get a bonus one for playing cities. Yay. Um, the only other thing I have to say 
is that this is a good start. We're feeling pretty good. We're happy. We have more energy. We can't get Martian Rails. Excuse me. We could buy Martian Rails on turn two, but we wouldn't because we have no energy in our bowl that needs to be produced from the, the turn before to activate it and collect on that income. So, who? So, these are all good. However, they're not good enough because they're all way too late game for us, though oxygen is going to be an issue, and we score high points if we can get this stuff. I almost want to grab algae because algae is just, it's just good. Uh, it's easier to rush five oceans than it is to rush like 15 heat bumps to get trees. I think we take it, and then I'm actually going to take energy tapping. Am I? Yeah, I, th I think energy tapping on the second generation is a steal. And not just in the sense that you're stealing energy from people. <laughs> uh, and then we do fusion power, because that energy tapping was actually the second thing for us. Now we have a bunch of energy. If you watched our friggin', well, one of the Helion runs we recently had, uh, you can see what we can do with a little bit of energy, if you know what I mean. And by that I mean, not much. We just let it turn into heat and then use it then. Which is a really interesting concept. Terraforming Mars is really onto something with that. Um, so Saleta could elevate this game into really uh, good terraforming. And then Business Networks is just also good. So Martian Rails is first for us. Good card. And now we will start collecting this turn. Think of it as 12 bucks for four income a turn, except you get the income the turn you plan, as long as you plan for it, of course. Now, Saleta next turn, is that possible? We're collecting 15, plus six is 21, Saleta's 35. It is possible if we spend no money and draw no cards next turn. That's kind of not tempting to me. So I'd rather I'd rather just play our hand and get some immediate value from looking, taking a peek. We don't need herbivores. And then this space mirrors is all right, and we will generate even more energy. Because as far as I'm concerned, Saleta is seven heat production, which is really good. But it's unlikely that we'd be able to get it out next round anyway. So investing a little bit in some energy production, which will become heat, kind of bridges that gap for us. Um, Electro Catapult, Corporate Stronghold, all very good. Like, all all of these cards are good. Which makes me happy that I didn't try and go for the Saleta build. This is going to consume a lot of our energy, though. But I think getting two plant income and three TR, which is money, is big. Not to mention the Electro Catapult. I guess we can't play it all this turn. Why can't I play you? Oh, I don't have enough money turn one. I see. Well, I'll collect some money. No, I should have built the corporate stronghold first. What are you thinking? Oh, and then we have Steelworks, which I'll grab. We can't play Steelworks this turn. So now we have way too many, th too many things that can consume our energy. And I want to have at least one city on the top side here so that we can get in at these plants. Oftentimes, I'll place that here just to get at this this thicker squad of plants, not to mention the ocean adjacencies, but I'm not ready for oceans yet. Standard projects, in a Tharsis game, standard projects basically means you won't lose. So if you're looking for a game where I'm going to struggle, this might not be that game, or this might be the greatest sense of foreshadowing the world has ever seen or known. Um... I just said that we weren't going to be able to do all these energy actions and cards. But really, if I bought all of this, that would bring me up to seven tags of energy. And this card would bring us seven additional energy. So we go from four to 14. I'm kind of interested in that, to be honest. I, I'm also interested in the steelworks, though. And I'm also interested in electric catapult. 
I think electric catapult is the first one you want to do because that allows you to start collecting some money which we're going to use to finance this energy surge that we're going to do. Uh, fuel generators, yes. Though I should have looked at a card. We should always look to see, do we want one of these cards? Strip mine is a absolutely phenomenal draw. This this uh, run has just been elevated. Absolutely elevated. I would buy an income of energy with our... Um, with our action there, our space mirrors, but I don't think we have to, seeing as we have, you know, 10 more energy production on the way. Nuclear power? Like, I don't know if it's worth getting that much energy. It's so much. But it's so good to the point where I'm basically putting off everything. Though getting the steelworks up and running would be pretty good. I couldn't use it this turn though, because I still think it's better to collect collect on our cities. We've invested in cities. Let's get city monies. And let's look at a card. We don't need this. So a couple of them that jump to mind. The strip mine is fantastic because it will give us a lot of steel that will help us fund the other cards. Not to mention it will give us a bunch of TR, which will do wonders in that sense. And then we could do the asteroid early to get this extra heat bump, but I'd rather continue the investments into energy. If we, I was going to do geothermal power because it doesn't have a minus two income with it, but if we do nuclear power, we actually will have five energy income, and that means that we'll be able to collect on our cities and do a steelworks next turn, which will give us even more steel and oxygen and, oh, oh. If you guys are not sitting at home, rubbing your hands, looking at this, licking lips, going, this could be good. We're only in generation seven. This is the kind of position you think you'd be in at generation eight or nine on a good run. Ironworks, my God. All right, let's talk about oxygen. Right now we are not doing plants. Which is a sin, because as Tharsis, you have lots of cities, and most of your points are going to come from plants. We could have 10 energy after playing these things or whatever. More than that, actually. Is it worth building an ironworks? I think not. I'm going to get steelworks this turn, and I'm going to use it every turn, right? So... 7, 8, 9, 10, right? That's 4, and then 4 more. So that's 8 bumps. So that brings us from 2 to 10. Can we really not get 1, 2, 3, 4 greeneries, especially with magnetic field domes? I think we don't need ironworks. It's 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 only good for the oxygen. One, one steel out of 4 energy is really not great. Not to mention it could have been heat. And heat is kind of where we're struggling, despite having Saleta in our hands, which is weird. The investment loan can help push this stuff out the gate right now. So let's let's do this. Let's look at a card. I will take the industrial center because it cost me three bucks to buy it. Cost me four bucks to put it down. I put it down here. Oh, I can't put it down here because it's slightly off. I thought that I could, but it has to be beside a city. So I'll go here but beside the neutral city. Screw that neutral city. And I'll take a loan. Because a loan reduces our money income. But I'm going to put the savings in mon of money into creating more steel. Oh, good thing I, I meant to... I almost totally screwed up and didn't have a steel to sell. I would have had a plant, but much rather sell a steel. Mmm, so that's pretty delicious. And then we do this to get more money from our cities. We're back up to $31. All of a sudden, this turn isn't over. So I said I like Saleta. Or you heard me say it. I did say it. But is Saleta better than geothermal and power grid?
I took a loan to make this happen, so I gotta get some value out of it. At the very least, I can get a steal income, which is what I was planning on doing. Seven. What happens if I buy you 29? That leaves me with two bucks. I think I want the energy. Eight energy income? I can't I can't put that off for one steel income. Alright. Then we can talk about magnetic field domes and like just all the other stuff. Generation eight? Oh, we're doing gangbusters. Or processor. Now that's kind of more valuable if we're never gonna get friggin' plant stuff. You really hope we have plants in our hand. We don't need ore processor. It's good because it gives us income and it gives us titanium, which is more metals. I'm going to take it not because we need it to terraform the planet, but because. Second, I'm just checking our earth tech. Now we don't care about this card. Um, because it'll give us more income both. A titanium is worth more to me than a steel, though the two steel is obviously better. The big thing about it is that the TR we get from it and the titanium all of a sudden starts to become valuable to me in a way that I actually care. I don't know. I just think, I, I really feel as though that extra steel production for four energy wouldn't have been worth it, given that we could spend seven bucks for a little bit more... Like, there's so many ways of overdoing steel. Right now, we just happen to have a few good outlets for steel. But it, it would not surprise me if in this run, we get to the end and we're like, Oh, rats. We were supposed to do something with this. Thankfully, I've gotten to a position where I can do Saleta. And now, let's talk about, do we want to sell a card? Do we want to sell a card to get a steel production this turn? I think so. I haven't played a single plant tag yet. I don't think Advanced Ecosystems is going to generate more points than how I get a steel income this turn. It's contentious because three points for 11 bucks is a very good ratio. But... I don't have a single animal card. If I get an animal card, I'll still need a micro card, right? And 11 bucks isn't that easy to just throw out there when you can also buy a greenery beside two of your cities for 20 bucks, right? So, you know, the, the savings are going to be huge. And here's another outlet for steel. More heat and Vesta is all good. These are all very powerful cards. Let's uh, let's start collecting. Like I feel like a tax collector. Like we're running around, knocking on doors, going, you know, where's our bunny for our steel? Where's our steel for our energy? Where's our titanium? Everybody, you know, everybody here loves taxes, right? Oddly enough, I'm a huge fan of taxes, but it's not. We don't need to do regular theaters. We have oxygen almost maxed out right now. Um, but I like taxes, because to me, taxes, I associate with the service you get, not the I paid money, sad, sad. But I don't want to sit here and have a debate on that, because I'm sure a lot of people are like, to take our monies. We don't want you to take our monies. But also, there's a pothole in that road, and could you fix it? <laughs> Anyways, moving on. We are doing gangbusters now in a couple of things. Um, you can basically buy one more card this turn, and I really want the titanium production, but I also want the asteroid, because that bumps us up to getting a heat production. But I also want the molehole area, because that's four heat production. Now, yeah. I was going to not do the molehole area because we have steel coming in. And we could buy steel income, actually, if we did uh, asteroid instead. You know what? I am going to do it this way. Not because the molehole isn't the better card to play. It is. 
However, the reason I'm leaning away from it is because next turn I'm going to have five steel, plus I'm going to get two steel, but sell two steel. So like that five steel, I could put into magnetic field generators, but I want the option of putting it into mobile. The, this gives me a heat income, a little bit of titanium aligned up, and the TR, which gives me a little bit more monies. Okay, okay. We still have a decent ways to go, but it's generation 10. So this here is a one point animal. This here gets microbes and this here gets heat. The reason I'm interested in that one point animal is because not only does this card bring us two animals, but this card could bring us animals. And it doesn't look like we're gonna need uh, the plants because our oxygen is gonna do whatever. So let's go knock on some doors. You know, here's the goods you asked for, give us your money. Here's the energy you asked for. Mmm, the double bump. What, how delicious is that? A little bit more cash flow. Let's look at the card, Tone of Comet. Great way to get oceans down. Okay, now I'm trying to think, where do we want to put our mole hole? Where would we want to put our mole hole? I'm not sure it's an easy question. It's half off because of our steel. I think we put it here. This is a hard spot to make useful. Then we get a city beside it in the future. The game stuttered there for a second. I don't know if you saw it on your end, but it spooked me. I'm like, not this run, baby. Not this run. You can't have it. I'm having fun. <sighs> I think I'm gonna be a little bit greedy and do Vesta. Vesta, it's it's dumb to do Vesta because we have five titanium right now. And by spending it on Vesta, we get four titanium back in the future. So the way you can look at this because of the time value of money and therefore titanium is it's basically like spending five, depending on your rate of return, to like getting three back in the future. But would you spend two titanium for a point? Probably. It's really only one titanium, but time value. Now here's the other thing. I really want magnetic field domes. I do. However, I see the value in A, that energy is currently turning into heat, which is something I need. But B, I want to wait till next turn to have five more steel and use that to pay for the magnetic field dome. So I'm leaning between these cards. And I think it's more important to do imported GHG because there's production associated with it. And then we'll do towing a comet next time. Hydrogen is good, but I want the livestock first. We can't play the livestock because we don't have an income for it. And last thing to talk about, $7 to get four steel, because we produced four times. It's a profit of $1. If we got advanced alloys, it would be better. But so many times you run out of cards to play that use steel, so let's, uh, let's not worry about it. So birds is a little bit easier, in fact, extremely easier compared to comparatively to play than um, livestock because we don't have to lose a plant income. I think we do this, take this for the end game. I don't know why I want quantum extractor. Oh yeah, I have a number of space tags. So let's do that. Let's grab a card. Giant ice asteroid. Yes, yes, yes. High fives all around. Slap! Woo! 
And let's go collect. Money, money. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, I don't know if you've played much solo. I mean, I know some of you really have. But Giant Ice Asteroid and Deimos Down are the two cards that you most commonly, like most of your games, you will be praying for. Because they're very cost-effective. Well, Deimos Down's cost-effective if you have something to use the steel you're going to get from it for. But Giant Ice Asteroid, like, are you kidding me? Like, let's say we had a standard project, two oceans, and we didn't have... And we didn't have standard technology in our hand. That's literally 36 bucks right out the gate, right there. You know, not to mention you can use titanium on it. Sometimes things give you money back, whatnot. Two extra heat bumps on top of the 36 bucks that you would have had to pay for the oceans. Like, that is value, right? Crash it, the bigger, the better. It is a giant ice asteroid. You go out in the universe, you find an asteroid that looks like a freaking moon. Wait, that's not a moon. That is, that is, I have always screwed up this art. I always thought that this was the asteroid, the giant ice asteroid. But first of all, that does not look like ice. It looks like Mars. And in fact, we know it's Mars because you can see the Mariners Trench here, this huge cut, you know, some mountains or whatever. Uh, you know, Tharsis City is over here, I guess. Uh, and this here, you can almost not see it, is the, the outline of the ice comet. So there you go. Good stuff. That's fun. That's fun to learn. Crash it, the bigger, the better. Do we crash it this turn? I'm leaning away. Do I not have science tags? This is so... <laughs> to be this far ahead in the game and not have the science tags... I am. I wonder how many of you guys noticed that because I have almost always, always grab science, grab science, grab science. We have one here, but we do not have. We do not have enough science tags. I'm used to having so many science tags, and these cards not coming up. These cards with large science tag requirements are, are quite potent. But damn. Okay, so let's look at this. We've done all of our collecting our tax monies. Let's trash our energy now. Though we'd still have 11. 24 is an even break point for not one, not two, but three heat bumps. Remember, we're generation 11 right now. We could play livestock now. I'd rather play birds, though. Birds are 13. Let's think about that for a second. <sighs> I think that means I'm going to do livestock. Because then I have something to throw this stuff on. And let's get some cards. Let's get some cards, and we're just going to grab two cows. Yeah, I was hoping for better than that from the two cards. I should have just done Ice Asteroid. Of giant towing a comet could be good this one does not quite get us the requisite number of plants none of them do is this is this worth playing nine dollars to get two heat three times it's cheaper if you if you expanded the math okay and said it was like four heat, it would cost three more dollars, comparatively, proportionally speaking. Would you spend 12 bucks to get eight heat? I actually don't think so. I don't think this is a good card for us because spending, spending two more dollars for a heat now means that we would get the TR for it and then we would just make as much money and we could still sell that card.
This is two TR, so this actually makes us the most money back. I don't want to do this one because I want to use steel to do it. Let's just tow a comet. We'd have a little bit of money left over. I, I mean, using titanium for it makes it a little bit more appealing, but I think our best bet is to not. I mean, maybe I should have started down there, but... And let's just pass with this. Oh, sorry, we need to make our cow. One point animals, man. They go far. So we have 11 energy production and we need 9 of it. It's only generation 12 though. We have a lot of oceans to go. I wonder if caretaker project's going to be required here. Two heat bumps this turn, two, two. With giant ice asteroid, I could see it being useful. I could see all of this being useful, honestly. Uh, I'm going to start off with Noctis City. We got a city. Well, no, let's let's collect. Ding dong. Money, money. And I'm going to get that cow now because I, I feel like I've missed getting animals in the past. Sometimes animals are every, like, a point for every two animals, so it doesn't feel as bad to miss it. But look at that. Delicious. Now, we didn't actually need the oxygen bump there. But when you're getting two, ooh, thank you. When you're getting two resources for it, two steel, kind of feels worth it. So I want to do that click at the top, the money for cities after playing Noctis City. Let's just do it. We have 10 bucks off. Now it looks like it costs us eight bucks, but once we play it, we can look over here. Three one and three dollars back because Tharsis. Um, I didn't play Giant Ice Asteroid last round and I kind of regretted it, but I think I'm about to make the same mistake. Because if I play Water from Europa, I can go grab this card on top of the card I just drew for, like, for playing that card. And I'm hoping for just a little bit of science. But we did not, in fact, get a little bit of science. What are we missing? Oh, yeah. Now we collect on our cities. We're still quite rich. Affluent. We could get our birds. Let's get the giant ice asteroid. Um, and I'm going to build up these spots for now. Well, I guess I could have done along the top, and then I was gonna. I want to greenery into this spot. The thing is, had I oceaned here, I could greenery beside Noctis just as easily. That gets us in range for algae. Algae is gonna be like a lot of plants because it gets the bonus production, so it's three plants, three times nine plants, ten bucks for greenery, and then some. It's pretty good. Radcams is still good, but I think I want to use my steel on it. Well, maybe I do, maybe I don't. It's like a good tropical resort. I also want to use my steel on tropical resort is the thing. You know what, this time I'm going to get this one. And let's think about this. I want birds... Birds is good points. We're just waiting on a giant earth convoy, which would give us a bunch, four animals, two points on the card, an ocean, and more card draw. It would be a pretty phenomenal... Oh, this isn't... That one isn't our city, sadly. But that's fine. We'll get one plant from that for now. We do have enough for caretaker contract. We don't have the heat. But I have, what, two bumps next turn? There's no need for Caretaker Project as it stands, but if we get another space event, it likely might put us into the range where we have too much heat. Or I could stop spending my energy, but... Hard to say. 
At this point, I do not believe it is worth spending $14, because I have to buy the card, to get cloud seeding. $14 to get four plants and lose another dollar on production. So 15 bucks to get four plants. And that's including the bonus. It's just bad. Black Polar is bad as well. Shuttles is good. I like Shuttles. Shuttles is a good point when we have all this extra titanium and it'll make our space stuff cheaper, though we just played a bunch of our space stuff. Collecting. I did activate birds, didn't I? Yeah, good. I was worried there for a second I hadn't activated birds on the last run. So... At least one bump right now. Just let that sit for a second. I have cards that use metal. Yes, I do. Okay. Now let's go back and discuss. Things don't look amazing right now, but they're pretty good once you consider the fact that I have standard technology just floating in my hand, waiting for an excuse. I'm kind of thinking about playing Caretaker Contract, though, and using 8 Heat on it. The reason being that we have a lot of... We have a lot of cards that could potentially in the future if we draw them give us that heat bump so getting a tr for it by playing caretaker project and then buying the heat bump using standard technology in the future anyway kind of is a wash and then if we do get a card like a uh i don't know like an ice comet or something it uh it'll give us a heat bump and an ocean and then all of a sudden, we're like, just laughing. So we have two heat bumps next turn. If I play this, we still have two heat bumps next turn. If I play this, I mean, it's all fine. It's all fine and dandy. Lord, it's like a hard candy Christmas. Um, sorry, a little bit of Christmas dropping into me in the middle of May. Important Nitrogen is just such a good card. The thing is, what does it give us this turn other than one green replacement? But the green replacement doesn't actually give us oxygen. It would just give us adjacency. I think that I want to do this for my standard projects to be cheaper. And then I want to... Just buy some oceans. Let's get ahead on on this game here. I guess I buy. I could just set put it all off till next turn. The thing is, if I was gonna buy immigration shells, for example, if I buy them this turn, I have five more dollars next turn. If I just pass this turn and hope for better cards, it's fine because I haven't committed. I still have all this money. But I'm losing out on all these potential points. Though, to be fair, two points for $30 is, like, really bad. Because I could just buy a green rate. Either way, uh, I'm going to pass and play a conservative high-score approach. Because you could standard project out a bunch of TR right now or you could do what I just did which was just wait it out and hope for a little bit better uh, underground city is really good don't have anything that really makes this shine I definitely want the steel because I'm selling this deal. It might be worth doing the math and selling a plant and what have you, but not really into that. I, uh, I'd rather just have all my money together consolidated 
and then uh, and then we can talk about it. So let's look. I'll take Heather. It's it's a bad. It was no. That was a bad choice. The question is, do I commit to the bad choice? I bought it because it's it's a good card. It's just it's only gonna give us a plant now and a plant in the bonus phase. Is seven sorry nine dollars worth two plants? No, because I can buy a greenery for twenty bucks outright. So this will be in our hand if we need a single plant to get us somewhere. But it's it's by no means a good purchase. Underground City, on the other hand, is powerful for us because it's using a lot of our steel, yes, but then we place it here, we get a little bit of a scoop and a point. It gives us money back across the board, and then when I place a greenery beside it, which I want to do anyway, I'm getting even more gangbuster points from it. Let's get those oxygen, or oceans rather, cleared up. There's no cards to grab on the board, so we are really just just doing this the hard way. We do have things that could use titanium, and we do have something that would use steel. I'm going to lean into that steel card. Ooh, actually, I should have gone here. $4 is better than two steel, unless you have advanced alloys. Uh, but this is, this is just a really good two-point card. Now, this is two points for us because it's going to give us two animals, not to mention it's going to give us a bunch of, and we'll, we'll do birds this time to, to smoothen the curve, I guess. There's a two-point spot here, but for now, let's go beside this city. Just get a little bit more money, a little bit more stuff. So, now we talk about Heather. Heather, as it stands, would give us an additional greenery. Okay, so that's good. Is there anything else that's worth talking about? Well, this is this is like an obvious buy. Don't don't get me wrong. We still have things to do. We still have a little bit of heat. What I'm really trying to suss out here is is it gonna be worth buying? I'll do one of these clicks right now. Is it would it be worth buying two heat bumps for twenty two dollars so that I can get another bump here with this heat? Right? Because it's 20 and I guess I have to buy one heat bump regardless because I bought that card and I risked it for a higher score so now it's really just a question of is $11 for a point more cost effective than something else I don't know I think the greenery here is obvious a city would be good Gives us plants, but like, you know, you could sit here, for example, but. Like, this greenery spot's just so powerful. I'm gonna start with that greenery spot. I, it's not the best place to start. You'd much rather start along the oceans, because then you get your rebates up front. Because, you know, you could be in a position where you have not enough to play something, but had you built it first and got the money back, then you could have built what you built first. Second. Like, <laughs> two points for $20, $22, is, is more expensive than buying a greenery outright and putting it beside our city. So let's greenery. Here gives us money back, here gives us money back, here gives us two plants so we don't have to buy Heather. But buying Heather isn't that bad. Do we have a steel card? No. So going here is not worth it. I'm gonna go here. There's only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cities on the board, so this also isn't worth it. Nothing in our hand is is worth playing. Hmm. Now Interestingly, or at least I think so, had I built this greenery 
like here or here, for example, or even here. Well, we have a good city spot here, actually. Had I built this greenery here, I would have created a triple, but I would have had to give up on a plant, which doesn't matter, and two bucks, which could have mattered. Yeah, I can't help but feel like I'm leaving points on the table. Because I can buy a greenery for two points again, or I can buy a city for two points. Neither is is better than the other. The city is technically a dollar cheaper because of all the rebates we get. So I'll put it here. So this is exactly the scenario I was talking about, where look at our look at our stuff. We don't need any of these cards. Okay, so we sell them all. Do 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 right we have 17 bucks there's nothing we can do with 17 dollars to score a point so instead we use this money to buy an asteroid and then we did not spend our heat so we get a heat bump here oh i could have saved money using our energy I, oopsies we, we could have had three more dollars and I didn't do this yet. Oh my god, I'm a dumb dumb. Never mind. I should have bought a greenery here for two points and then used the heat. So we lost a point because of that. But I'm still going to get one of these two double point spots. Oh. <laughs> this game is hard. Eh? There's a lot of things floating around in the head. Uh, I'm going to go to this spot. This spot is cool, but it gives a point to the neutrals. and I don't like that they cut the board in half on me. And done. So this is a pretty green, greenery light. Well, I don't know. It's it's okay. We got 15 points on cities. 102 points. We have been winning consistently, but breaking 100 points has just been a struggle this season. Though I have to admit that this run could have been much stronger. It really could have been. We had some good cards going. But we didn't have the card engine, which didn't lead to any good science, which didn't lead to any good cost reduction. And then we had to standard project most of the oceans and stuff. Like We were on a really good pace, but we just couldn't quite clinch it. And I think we had a really weak 13 that we just passed on and moved into the next one. Probably could have got a little bit more value out of playing some of those cards, but... Either way, I hope you enjoyed. I had a lot of fun on this one. It was it was a pleasure to play. It was just fun. It was just good terraforming. I really broke down a lot of stuff. Maybe I'll title this video so it's a little bit more outwardly beginner friendly and people know. But either way, I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next one.